Hi, I'm Rob the Flight Mariner. Welcome to the channel. I've spent most of my career at sea and now today I'm the captain of this fine vessel. I've sailed the four corners of the world or flown there and I've landed on this heli deck a few times as well. But there's always been an ambition, a goal, something I've always wanted to do. It's time to get the pilot's license. I'm a ship's captain and I've always had a passion for flight. From a young age, Dad and I played flight simulators, often challenging each other to difficult navigational tasks. Dad and I often travelled up and down the country to different air shows. And we watched with interest some great GA pilots on YouTube. Dad passed away two years ago, so in his honour, I'm going to fulfil our dreams and learn to fly. First, some research on websites like the CAA's got me started. After some careful research, I chose to learn to fly with the Old Buckingham Aero Club. Old Buckingham is a small airfield with an 800 metre long runway, a brilliant cafe and very friendly people and staff. The museum there is definitely worth a visit and honours the men and women of the 453rd Squadron which was based at Old Buckingham. And so the decision was made. I contacted Old Buckingham to commence my PPL training. It was time to spend some money. The Pooley's Air Pilot Manuals were a great compendium with clear and concise instruction. Then I bought a headset, yes it's a Bose A20 but what a great headset that is, with active noise cancelling and one of the best headsets on the market. I also needed a CRP1 flight computer, a navigation plotter with protractor, a CPM ruler which is scaled to include speeds, distances and times, great for doing diversions in the air, a set of pens and of course some VFR charts. So all there was to do now is study and fly. Now working at sea, I was able to spend my evenings studying hard to pass the theory exams. Air law, communications, meteorology, principles of flight, human factors and limitations, aircraft general knowledge, navigation, flight performance and planning, and operational procedures. The exams really do require you to study. They are not easy, but you can pass if you study hard enough. I had some great help from my crew with Q&A sessions, especially in RT. Eight, nine, nine, and we had some laughs as well. <laughs> However, it did become a standing joke to find me asleep during my studies. Eventually though, all the training does pay off. Eventually you do crack those landings. And then you do the skills test. And then one day, through the letterbox, lads one of these. Let's go fly. So you join me on the ground at Old Buckingham on a VFR flight to Northampton Sywell. VFR, or Visual Flight Rules, means we're navigating visually today by reference to a VFR sectional chart and using our visual references on the ground. VFR below 3,000 feet means we must remain clear of cloud with a 5 km visibility and with the surface in sight. Today the weather is good with a few clouds of 2,400 feet and a light southeasterly wind of 8 to 10 knots on the ground. Here we have the engine started and we're about to commence our power and pre-flight checks. Okay so here we go, we're uh, 
We'll start our power check, so uh, we'll go on to the fuller tank, which they're pretty much the same at the moment. Uh, but the fuel to the fuller tank, egg and teaser peas are within the limits. They're slightly cold at the moment. We'll have to give her a couple of minutes just to warm her up and just see how we go. So watch for the oil pressure, make sure we don't go too high because she's still quite cold at the moment. No, nope, we're good. We're up to 2,000 RPM and brakes are holding. Car peak check. Maximum drop is 75 RPM. We get the normal 50. Hold it for 10 seconds. And that's good. Magneto check, one. Left hand magneto is good. About 50, RP, uh, 50 RPM drop and back to the other one. Number two mag and same again, about 50 RPM drop. Uh, we're currently suction of just under five. A meter is charging. Agent T's and P's are within the green and idle back the agent for a check. Make sure it doesn't stall. No, it doesn't. Back up to 1200 RPM. Okay, trimmer set for takeoff. Bottle friction. Finger tight, mixture is rich. Magnetos are both on. Pito heat not required at the moment. Primer is in and locked. Fuel pump on. And we're staying on the fuller tank there. Flaps, we'll have one stage for takeoff. Instrument check. So my AI is leveled now. Now we're going to give her a good run. We're on 250 for the DI. We're on QNH, which I'll work out at about 1010 at a minute. 1010. Zero, zero. Packs and harnesses are secure, yes I am. Carburetor heat is set as cold, controls full and free movement. And transponder to on. Right, okay, so that's checked complete. So uh, we're ready to uh, taxi out. Here we go. So we're going to do a 180 here on the grass to head up to the Charlie Hold. Now Old Buckingham is an air-to-ground radio aerodrome. This means the radio operator can give advice and information, but the pilot has full authority for the movement of their aircraft in the air and on the ground. Old Buckingham radio isn't manned every day, and as such today we'll be making blind radio calls to broadcast our intentions to any other aircraft listening on the frequency. Charlie's at Charlie Hold, entering the active runway 25, uh, backtrack, line up. Okay, approach is clear, transponder is on, pitot heat is off, not required, landing light on, and we're good to proceed. So, climb out to Snetterton. Okay, approach clear, yep, entering the runway. Okay, here we are. The end of the runway. Right, so we've got a slight left crosswind on takeoff. Have a look at that wind sock. Oh gosh, so Charlie taking off runway 25. Full power. Power comes up. We've got a slight left crosswind there. Okay, our speed is alive, 50 knots. 55, 60 knots, gently ease are off, we're off the ground and we're climbing out. A little bit bumpy on takeoff there. Nice little takeoff though, very nice. A bit bumpy up here, that's all. So we'll come right for noise abatement to 270. Uh, we'll come up to 300, she's climbing very well this morning. Flaps away at 300 feet above the ground. 70 knots for the climb. Little look under the nose. T's and P's are in the green. Continue to climb. 7 0. Uh, we're going to tune on next three. We're going to climb for 3000. Um, so we'll tune on next frequency, which is Lake and Heath Radar, which I should have done before I left the ground. Lake and Heath, 128900. So, 128900. 1,000 feet, direction is good, attitude is good, ball is where it should be. Look out under the nose, agent T's 
the peas remain in the green. And we're going to come to 2,000 feet, so we're going to turn left over to Snetterton. Continue in the climb. We've just uh, seen the VOR swing there for the Daventry VOR. Oh, we'll level out there at 2,500 feet, I think. Okay, 2,500 feet, 2,300 RPM, and we'll just trim it out a little bit. These are in the green, top of climb check, so, uh, Frida, so, fuel, on the left hand, fuel pump can come off, now landing light away, radios are tuned, I haven't identified yet on the uh, Daventry VOR, engine T's and P's in the green, a little bit of car peak check, and uh, we'll do a DI in a moment, which is uh, 235, which is still all right, 235. Uh, Buckingham traffic, Golf Sierra Charlie's overhead, Snatterton, uh, frequency change to Lake and Heath radar on uh, 128, uh, decimal 900. Lake and Heath radar, Golf Lima, Foxtrot Sierra Charlie, request basic service and max penetration. Golf Sierra Charlie, Lake and Heath, Squawk 0450, say altitude. Uh, Squawk 0450, uh, altitude is uh, 2,400 feet on uh, 1010. Golf Sierra Charlie, radar contact, 12 miles east of Lake Mead, basic service, mass penetration approved, QNH 1009. Uh, QNH 1009, mass penetration approved, they'll be routing uh, Honington and then direct to Sidewell. That was uh, 16, which we arrived at, so we're estimating uh, 8 on that, to 24 for Honington. Outlaw 1, Squawk 3661 for Marm. Squawk 3661 for Marm, Outlaw 1. Okay, so we've just uh, got a basic service of match penetration. Charlie, Charlie advised that it's off down heading for the time being. We have a C-130 setting up for an approach into Milton Hall runway 29. Uh, Roger, we'll maintain 2,400 feet on the Q&H and uh, head to the base of the 1018, Gulf Sierra Charlie. Thank you. Hello, Chris Darson, uh, we've got a C-130 on finals for Milton Hall. So uh, we'll maintain 2,400 feet and 180 uh, heading. So there we go, just come round to the left, 180. Strix 45, turn left, heading 010. So that's Honington there. We're maintaining a southerly track at the moment for them. And our next course will be uh, on the VOR. So I'm looking for a 263 uh, radial. So we're almost on that now, we're going to go across it now. Golf Sierra Charlie, traffic no fact to resume on navigation, thanks. Uh, Roger, no problem at all, uh, we're coming right uh, now to uh, 263. Okay, so I've just uh, said that we've got no traffic issues, so we're coming right now. 263, so there's Honington. So there's Honington just out there at the moment. So we're going to come around now to stick on the radar for 263. It's a bit intermittent at the moment. So we're on the VOR radial now. Always tune and identify. So we're looking for Delta Tango Yankee as the uh, uh, nav one. I don't know if we'll pick it up yet. That's it, that's it, there you go, and that's just 
the rich side of the lean. There we go, so we'll lean back. So that's mainly for fuel economy, really. Um, the engines run very rich as they are. Um, as they're built, they're built to run a little rich. And uh, as you... Oh, come back to the left a bit. As you uh, climb altitude, obviously, you don't need as much fuel, because the air's thinner. So you Outlaw 2, resume on navigation. Let's do some free to check, so fuel. Um, I'll switch the pump on and switch tanks now onto the right-hand tank. We are now firmly on the right-hand tank. And the uh, fuel pressure's holding, and fuel pump off. So, that was a fuel change at uh, 30. During my PPL training, I've had lots of practice with ATC, with requesting Class D transitions and match penetrations. As a PPL student, I joined a lot of Facebook groups to learn from other people's experiences. I found some people don't like talking to ATC and have varied opinions about getting a match penetration in what is really uncontrolled airspace, otherwise known as open FIR. I found the guys and girls at Lake and Heath Radar, Marham Zone and Norwich ATC nothing but obliging and helpful. As you've seen in this flight, Lake and Heath Radar suggested a southerly headache for a short while for their C-130 inbound to Mildenhall. Why not oblige them? It keeps us all safe. I think I prefer to be talking to someone than not. So I'm just going to flip over the top of this cloud. I can see through it, so... Golf Sierra Charlie, traffic 10 o'clock, 1, 2 miles, northeast bounds, the light takes wing 3,000. He'll be turning back to the southwest and descending in for Cambridge. Uh, Golf Sierra Charlie, uh, look up. Uh, add 40 onto that, becomes 06. Four, uh, 06, add 3, becomes 09. 09 for Santa Pod. That's what I'm expecting. Vector 1, 1 radar contact, 10 miles northwest of Lake Need basic service, mass penetration improved, QNH 1009. So there's Mildon Hall out off the wing. Remaining south of their ATZ. So one of the things I found uh, very difficult when I started flying was my instructor would say to me, there you go, down on the ground there, see it down there, and I'd be like, where? That airport down there, aerodrome down there, and I'd be like, nah, can't see it. It took a while to try and train your eyes to look for things on the ground. I find with runways and airports that looking for a runway is actually very difficult, especially if it's a, a grass strip. You kind of look for the features around it, and then, and then things like hangars and things, they, they stand out. The runway, believe it or not, doesn't actually stand out that well. It does stand out, not like you'd expect. So here we are, just going over Bunwell at the moment. Cambridge is just off there to the right of the picture, but you're just behind that cloud there, but you won't see it. Sierra Charlie radar service terminated squawk 7000, frequency change approved, have a good flight. Uh, frequency change approved, squawk 7000, many thanks for the crossing as always, appreciate it, Gulf Sierra Charlie. Right, okay, let's do some free to check, so the last check was at uh, 10 uh, with 10 minutes in. Uh, maybe a few minutes before that, so we'll do one now anyway. So, um, we're not doing anything, so let's do something. So, uh, fuel pump is off. Um, we're on the right-hand tank, let's switch to the left-hand tank. No, we're on the left-hand tank. And uh, fuel pump... Fuel pressure is holding, so fuel pump off. Okay, so I always take the time down. So fuel train, 10.30, we'll call it 10.43. 10.43. That worked out just nicely. Uh, fuel pump off, so radios are tuned and identified. There we go. Engine teaser piece are in the green, we've done a fuel change, car beat check. Okay, direction indicator is uh, 270, a little tweak on that. 
And I'll tell you what, there's all Q&A quantity there, is there now, for 3,000 feet. Half heat away. Very good. I'm going to stick a little pito heat on now, so um, we're estimating 3,008 degrees, but we'll get a little bit closer, let's just stick a pito heat on. A bit cool in the cockpit. Right, so we'll line up the next frequency, which for... So, uh, Sywell is 122705. 122705. Uh, double check that. Um, I'm going to pick up the ATIS now for Cranfield. And they've got 121880. So, 121880. And we'll split flop that. Zero nine twenty UTC weather departure runway two one initial contact frequency one two two decimal eight five five surface wind two three zero degrees fourteen knots Cav OK Pop out air temperature plus one three two point plus zero nine Q and H one zero one one QFE nine at nine at eight hectopascals Acknowledge receipt of information, Fox Truck, Cranfield Departure, 80 South. Right, so we've got the DME coming in now for uh, for the Daventry BOR. So let's have a little look at the runway at Sywell. So, uh, we've got runway 2 right, what they told me last time. 645, resume more navigation, you're through Lake Nita, you did. I'm coming in from this side. So I'm going to go to the center side. And then in. Okay. Ah, oh, it's done again. So now we make our approach into Sywell. I have to apologize because at this point, my forward facing GoPro had run out of battery. So you get to stare at me as I make a slightly flatter landing than I would have liked. Uh, Golf Sierra Charlie, final 2-3. Sierra Charlie, land your discretion. Golf Sierra Charlie. Well, the RT could have been better. I should have really acknowledged landing at your discretion. The next three stages are flaps. Trim up back to 70. Number zero, Golf Sierra is descending from power. With a frontal system inbound later today, there is a good gusting crosswind starting to develop, which as you can see, is not helping the final approach. 200 feet, car feet away, undercarriage is fixed, flaps are set. And then at 150 feet, a small wind shear, makes the ground come up that little bit faster. That came in bloody quick. Charlie, we're ready, vacate left. Gosh, Charlie, vacate left. I hope you enjoyed the video. I made plenty of mistakes on this flight and some sloppy RT also, but I aim to improve as my experience grows. Please like, share and subscribe and don't forget to check out my website at flightmariner.co.uk. Keep safe and I'll see you again on another Flight Mariner adventure.